Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad de tu pueblo, Señor, Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad de tu pueblo, Señor, Señor, ten piedad. When Abel was dying, God heard his blood flow, and Moses was moved by the tears of the poor. But now there are some who would silence our cries and drown all our voices in rivers of lies. Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad de tu pueblo, Señor. Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad de tu pueblo, Señor, Señor, ten piedad. This pain of injustice is heavy, O oh God. Be with us, your people, the salt of the earth. Their tanks and their boots come with fury to smash. Whoever dare speak up on others' behalf. Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad de tu pueblo, Señor. Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad de tu pueblo, Señor. Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad de tu pueblo, Señor. Señor. Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad, Señor, ten piedad de tu pueblo, Señor, Señor, ten piedad. Welcome to worship, Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Lisa Bates Froyland. I've served Redeemer for nine years now, and uh, I'm grateful for all of you who tune in and who have been tuning in in the past several weeks. Things are gonna change just a little bit as we move into the summer months. Redeemer is experimenting with some uh, in-person worship services. All the precautions that we have heard and read about and researched are in place, but these YouTube videos will continue. They'll be a little bit simpler. Uh, you'll see a little more of me at times, but you'll always get a reflection on a piece of scripture and some good music and a blessing. So let's enter into this time now, uh, rooted in God, elevated by the Holy Spirit, and saved as always by Jesus. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, the gospel that is assigned for this week comes from the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter. And there's so much going on in our world. I don't want to comment on things very directly because I know that the news will change and things will shift. So I'm going to speak from a scriptural perspective and what Jesus was teaching at the time to his disciples. And I'm guessing that you will be able to make a lot of connections to what's going on now in the world. In this portion of the book of Matthew, Jesus is readying his 12 disciples to go out in ministry, to carry a message that not everyone is going to want to hear. Um, it is a message of love and acceptance for all. It's a message of repentance to turn toward God and to love God and love one another. That doesn't sound very controversial to us now, but in that context, it truly was. The expectations were that you belong to a religious uh, group or family and that the rules that you followed were more important than anything else. So things have changed now that Jesus has uh, welcomed in his disciples and this is part of what he says to them as he's sending them out. Here's the key verse. It's verse 16 of Matthew chapter 10. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. 
So I just wanted to spend a few minutes with those four animal groups that Jesus mentions right in a row, from sheep to wolves to serpents to doves. Now we've seen many, many times when we are called sheep in the scriptures. And often people like to just kind of leap right to sheep are stupid, we are stupid. Um, we can't make our own decisions. We just follow blindly um, what, whoever will lead us. I don't think that's what Jesus is getting at here. He uses the word sheep here to underline our vulnerability. Sheep have no natural defense mechanisms. Um, sheep don't have sharp fangs or other ways to fight off predators. Their strength really comes from being together as a large group. So the sheep in this case go out with their vulnerability. The disciples with their message that might be accepted, might be rejected, they might even be arrested for, go with that vulnerability. Into the midst of wolves, Jesus says. And what is a wolf? A wolf is known as a predator, one that is looking for those most vulnerable to destroy, to devour. And especially when the message that the sheep carries is very, um, threatens the status quo, then those wolves do sharpen up their fangs and they want to uh, destroy that message and keep it from, from spreading. So sheep among wolves, what is the antidote? To be wise like serpents and innocent as doves. Wise as serpents. What an interesting choice Jesus makes here. Because when we think serpent and holy text, we go back to the garden, don't we? The Garden of Eden and the serpent there who was uh, representative of our opponent, um, who goes by many names, sometimes Satan or the devil. The opponent in that case who slyly slithered up to Eve and said, you can eat from the tree of good and evil. You can be as wise as God. In this case though, I do not think that serpent is meaning for us to be evil in any way. But how does a serpent move? A serpent moves quietly on the ground, can shift its direction very quickly and does not strike often, but does only when absolutely necessary. So to be a wise like a serpent is to look for those small crevices where the message can get through, to be ready to move on a dime where you need to go, and to only strike when it's absolutely necessary. Be wise like serpents, innocent as doves. The dove in the Bible also takes us back to the Old Testament. Who gets sent out to look for evidence of land uh, when Noah is uh, recovering from the flood and looking for a place that that ark can stay? It's a dove. A dove seeks out the potential for a way to survive. A dove is a sign of peace. A dove descended when Jesus was baptized. A dove is still used in a lot of our Christian iconography to connote blessing, the presence of the Holy Spirit. To be innocent like a dove is not only to not be worthy of any blame or to bring any wrongdoing toward others, but it's also to carry this message, this feeling, this spirit, this energy, of peace and blessing as we go. So that is the fullness of the message, that we go forward with a controversial message of love and acceptance, and we carry that with vulnerability. There will be wolves among us who do not like that message and will threaten to devour us. We will move like serpents, staying close to the ground, moving quickly and we will be innocent as doves carrying the blessing of the Holy Spirit with us. You know, I've been thinking a lot lately that Jesus was a peaceful protester. 
Many times when we think about him coming into Jerusalem, seated on a donkey or maybe two donkeys, uh, that that was some kind of a triumphant parade. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was in contrast to the way that the Roman conquerors were coming in on huge white horses with all the military fanfare. Instead, here comes Jesus humbly walking into Jerusalem, and the protest was that God was in favor of those who'd been oppressed, that God was ready to lift up the lowly. God had proclaimed that as God's intention all along, and now here was Jesus and all these people arrayed with him and his disciples to make that message real. He even went into the temple and he overturned the tables. That doesn't count as looting. <laughs> Don't go there. But it was definitely a show of his anger and frustration. So Jesus was a peaceful protester, sharing a message of love. There's been a, you know, and Aaron used this uh, song in our worship last week, the Canticle of the Turning. This is my question as I walk about, ride my bicycle, participate in marches myself. Is the world about to turn? Could the world be about to turn? Are you ready for a nation that is convicted all the way across every possible division that policing must be done with respect and honor and dignity and without brutality anymore? Could that expand to equality in education, in housing? Could we address so much uh, poverty and blight in certain places? Not because of the value of the human beings there, that has nothing to do with it, but the places that we've chosen to invest. Could the world be about to turn? Can we continue to move wise as serpents and innocent as doves? Amen. Let's pray together a minute. And I'm going to close with the Lord's Prayer, and I'll, I hope you'll join me in those words. Dear God, we give you thanks for the blessing of this day, that you have uh, awakened us this morning and given us adequate strength and health to be present in this time, to join our hearts with those who are tuning in from wherever they may be, and that through the power of prayer we connect one to another through the Holy Spirit to you, God, and to your heart. We pray for all those who have been affected by the COVID-19 virus, those who live in fear of contracting it, those on the front lines, either in the medical communities or in the service economies, who are continuing the work at some risk to their health. We pray for all those who are addressing health issues besides COVID, heart disease, stroke, cancer. We pray for those who are out of work right now, for those who are seeking housing that is safer for them. We pray for displaced people whose careers or educational objectives have been so interrupted by this time. And God, more than anything else, we pray for a peace that has integrity, for peace that has equality, for peace that moves this nation to a new place, a place it hasn't been before. And the coalition that you are inspiring and building, we are in awe. We pray that we hold together as one with the kind of love and the kind of spirit that we saw in Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we pray together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord be gracious to you this week. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and forever and always give you peace. Go in peace, wise as serpents, innocent as doves. Amen. tortured and nailed to the cross, but you've conquered the forces of evil. You denounce the oppressor above, and you lift up the poor from the gutter. Te pedimos que nos oigas, que escuches el clamor de tu pueblo. Te pedimos que nos oigas, que escuches el clamor de tu pueblo. You were tortured and nailed to the cross. You were slaughtered by powerful people. Now your blood it is flowing again. In the blood of our massacred martyrs, te pedimos que nos oigas. Que escuches el clamor de tu pueblo, te pedimos que nos oigas, que escuches el clamor de tu pueblo. You were tortured and nailed to the cross, but you're bringing us justice and freedom. If we stumble, oh, help us to stand and continue to counter oppression. Te pedimos que nos oigas, que escuches el clamor de tu pueblo. Te pedimos que nos oigas, que escuches el clamor de tu pueblo. Te pedimos que nos oigas, que escuches el clamor de tu pueblo. Te pedimos que nos oigas, que escuches el clamor de tu 